Hi guys and welcome to my first attempt at ever doing a stats video. So I have two ways that I've been tracking my reads. So one is just in a bullet journal. I just, yeah. So I just write, write like a keyword on the spine of these books. They're already colored in and I just fill it in. And this is what January looks like. So from my bullet journal, I can tell you, and so it's just graphs like that. I mark the format if it's a physical, if it's a physical book plus an audiobook, an ebook, an ebook plus an audiobook, or a straight up audiobook. The age, the options are child, middle grade, young adult, and adult. Um, I also translate, or I also mark, have marked in here if it's in the original language or if it's been translated, how many stars I've given it from a DNF, a, a zero star, and then all the way through a five, the type of book, whether it's a novel, graphic novel, manga, or short stories, as well as the genre. So out of what I have read and that I have marked in my bullet journal, I have read 16 books for the month of January. That comes out to 4,655 pages read and 52 hours and 36 minutes listened. I do listen, um, if I'm reading a book along with the audiobook, I do listen to the audiobook at two times speed. Uh, if I am only listening, then it goes down to one and a half speed. One time speed or the normal, you know, the standard speed is just way too slow for me. So one and a half speed if it's just straight up listening, but if I'm reading along with a book, whether it's a physical or an ebook, I bump it up to um, two times speed. So as far as the format, there are, according to my bullet journal, there's four physical books, seven physical books while listening to an audiobook. I read four ebooks and want listen to one audiobook. Although the ebooks I'm wondering if this is actually right. I think I listened to those with the audiobook. I may have marked that wrong. But let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> you get the gist. Uh, for the age, I read eight adult books, six young adult, and two middle grade. And it looks like 14 of the books. I forgot to mark this one. Let me mark. Okay, so 14 of the books were in the original language. They were written in English. I can't read any other language, so it's I'm always going to read a book in English. Uh, so 14 were originally written in English. And that could be whether that's written by an American author or an English author or like from the UK or somewhere, it's written in English. Doesn't necessarily mean it's American. Uh, and two books I read were translated. I gave three five stars, four four stars, four three stars, one two star, and four one stars. I read ten novels, five graphic novels, and one manga. So the genres, one nonfiction, one classic, one contemporary, uh, let's see, five fantasy, one historical fiction, one horror, five romance, and one thriller. My favorite reads, I have three books that were my favorite for the month of January. Uh, one is the manga, which is Cat Massage Therapy Volume 2 uh, by Haru Hisagawa. So this is a contemporary, but it has fantastical elements. There are these actual cats that are masseurs, I think is the right word. I could be saying that wrong, but they are massage therapists, and they give massages to humans to help them de-stress and relax. And they go to this man's workplace and they do massages while these people are at work and they take a break to get a massage from cats. So, very cute. And the cats can actually communicate with the humans, so that's the fantastical element that comes into it. 
Uh, another one that I marked as my favorite is a middle grade, and that is the second in the Pinch of Magic series. So the second book is called A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. This one took place at sea. There's a case of mistaken identity where the younger sister is... People think that she is someone else, and so they she gets taken by these men. And then it's up to her two older sisters to try and save her and find their grandma and save the grandma as well. So they go on an adventure. It takes place mostly at sea. Loved it. Um, and then the other favorite was The Chestnut Man by Soren Svistrup, and that's one of the ones that was translated. And that was very graphic as far as you're following two POVs. Both of the people that you're following are in law enforcement and they investigate crime scenes. So the graphic does come from them seeing these murder scenes with all this blood. Uh, you also have autism rep, you have sexual assault, sexual assault of someone with a disability, you have um, cheating. There's there's a couple of triggers in that. Definitely look it up. I can't remember all off. It's been a bit, but I really enjoyed that one. So anyway, so those, that's how I tracked in my bullet journal. So I'm not real perfect at tracking in my bullet journal, but that's the best that I did. Now, I have, I am trying for the first time to track by using the Copile system that G from Book Rust created. I will put G's channel in the description box. And there are several things that I can tell you about. I will try to access the information from Copile and I'll try and insert it somewhere. If I can, I've got to, right now I just have it on my phone. I don't know how to get it. I'll try to access it on my computer so that I can screenshot stuff and insert it, but if I don't, then that means I just didn't figure out figure it out by the time this video goes up, but I will definitely try to. Okay, let's do, let me see what they've got, what she has here. This is the first time I'm finding this out with you right now. So, okay. So I have acquired 58 books. Of those books, I have read zero. Now some of those are grief shopping, some of those are books that I brought home from my grandma's house, and some of those books are um, from book boxes, and just from various sources. Okay, so the 58 that's wrong. It's actually 55. Um, because three of those are ones that I won from Goodreads this month at the start of February. So 55 books acquired. Again, those are from my grandma. Those are some books that I bought grief shopping. Um, and the 58 books also includes ebooks. So those are not all physical. And it looks like for the month of January... Um, no, looks like that's all that I can really tell you on that page. Okay, let's move on to series tracker. Now, this is interesting. So I have logged 44, it looks like, series. I can tell you that I did complete one series. Now, the series that I complete was only a duology, but it is still a series because it's not a standalone. And let's see. So I have 40, oh, it's 43, excuse me, 43 no, I have tracked 44. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. I have 43 series that are still waiting to be completed right now. Um, I have one series that I have finished. So that's the 44 series. So, and zero series DNF'd. I'm, I really don't like DNFing stuff. I gave myself permission to DNF stuff and I just didn't like it. So I don't know. I, I'm still kind of... You know, I'm I'm happy if you're able to DNF it, but I I just don't like DNFing stuff, and I just really don't. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm gonna let myself DNF this year, but that's where it stands right now. So zero DNF'd, 
43 ongoing, one finished as far as the series. And I imagine that the ongoing series is just going to increase as time goes on. Okay, moving on. All right, now here is the stats page. Let me see, we've got quite a bit of stats to look at here. So let me zoom in to where I can see this. Okay. So the first one just says books read per month. This is a total including any DNFs and that's 16 books. Okay. Um, the next section is books DNF'd per month. Well that is zero for me so far. Uh, total DNFs, there's no data because I have not DNF'd anything. Uh, Rereads versus first time. Every single book that I've read in January has been the first time reading it. There have been no rereads in January. So that's interesting. Well, it's not surprising because I, I would like to reread more books. I just don't. So because there's just so many new books I want to read. Uh, let's see. Books read for readathons. I did participate in like one. I participated in the Who Done It readathon, and eleven of the books that I read went towards that readathon. Um, but there are zero for a book club that will change. That will go up um, starting in February because I have my Autism's Reads kind of book club, um, and I'll list have the Discord channel for the Autism Reads in the description box as well. So that will start going up. That number will change from zero. Let's see. Genre. It says... Let's see. Okay, 6.3%. In other words, one book that I read was a thriller, one was a historical fiction, one classic, one nonfiction, one horror, and one contemporary. Fantasy is at 31.3%, which is five books and five romance, so 31.3% as well. As far as format goes, we've got to zoom in. Five in graphic novel, so that's 31.3% for a graphic novel. One book, 6.3%, one book is a manga, same as nonfiction and nine books are in regular novel format. So that's pretty much what I anticipated from what I tracked in my bullet journal that matches up. Books per publisher. Okay, so there are there are two publishers that I read two books from. Everything else was completely brand new publisher if that makes sense. So one book from Penguin Life, from Dreamscape, I'm guessing, World Editions, Simon & Schuster, etc. Some of these are cut off. Uh, two books were from Scholastic Press and two from Hotter Children's or something like that. It's cut off. And I think I know what ones those are. I think those are the um, graphic novels. As far as star ratings, according to Copile, I have four one-star books, one two-star, four four-star, three, no, four three-star, and three five-star. As far as age category, eight were adult, six were young adult, and two were middle grade. And let's see, LGBTQ plus rep. Seven books had LGBT rep, and um, eight or nine, there was no LGBT rep, or at least it wasn't mentioned. Um, and out of the ones that did have it, most of the time it was multiple. It wasn't just straight up female, female, or male, male. It was multiple. There's a book that I'm reading right now that has bi rep um, in there and as well as autism rep so it's got a couple of things in there but yeah so that's been interesting. Let's see the breakdown. 
oh, breakdown of the uh, LGBT rep is one book I think had, I think it's called Ace, I could be wrong on that, where it's, my understanding is that this is someone who doesn't get sexual feelings or desires for people. They get to know them and love you as a person, like they love their parents, they love their siblings, they love their friends, but they don't develop um, any urges past that. I could have the wrong terminology. So one book does have that. Uh, one book that I read has straight up female-female relationship. And five books have a representation of multiple. I do know one that has not only male-male, it also has female-female, and also trans in it. Um, so. Okay. POC author. One is yes, one is a known, and 14 books are no. As far as I can tell. Now, POC... Um, I'm just tracking that as a, like, a one of two, I think. Please let me know if it should be any different. But, I don't know. It kind of, it's person of color. And I, I get that. And so, for my mind goes, well, it's going to be either a black author or, like, a brown author. Um, so, like, Polynesian, uh... Tongan, Hispanic, like Mexican, Spanish, something like that. And this is just by, unless it says it, um, it's, it's an unknown, or I'm guessing off of the way the person looks from their author picture. So that's the only way I know. If you have a better way to break, to track that, let me know. Um, didn't give me a breakdown because a lot of the times I'm just, even though they don't look white <laughs> in the book, they very well could be and just be really tan. I don't know. So I, I'm not, I don't know about that. I just don't know about tracking that. I'll continue to try, but that's not going to be perfect and that's not going to be completely accurate. I can guarantee that. Um, number of books per author. Um, there were several authors I read to for the first time, including uh, like Wilkie Collins, Cat Winters, two books. So everything was by one, one book per author except for the following. Two authors I read multiple books from. And so I read two books for from Lyra Celine. That was Amber and Dusk and Diamond and Dawn. That is the Amber and Dusk duology. That is the series that I completed. I read both of those books in January. And I will say the second book, in my opinion, was so much better than the first book. Um, so I'm glad I got the second book from the library and read it. The author that I read four books from is Alice Oseman. It was my first time reading from this author. Unfortunately, I gave all the books one star. Now, just to feel accomplished, I will finish the series. I know there is a... Did I read the fourth book? I think I'm up to date. I know I do know that there's going to be another book. I think there's going to be a fifth book. And this is the Heartstopper series. Um, there'll be a fifth book. I don't know when it comes out, but there is a note on Goodreads saying that it is the final installment for that series. So, yeah, uh, I just, I don't know. I'm definitely an unpopular opinion on that. I just do not like that series, and why am I continuing to read it? I don't know. Um, so 12 different authors read. Let us move on got to scroll back up. Pages read per month. Now this is interesting. Let me see. So I have that I read in my bullet journal 4,655 pages. 4,655. That matches Copile. Okay. So I read 4,655 pages and Total hours listened, 50 hours and 76 minutes. So that's like 51 point something. Anyway, 
Uh, language read in 100% was read in English. That's the only language I can read in, so that's never going to change. Um, reading method, seven were physical, two were audiobook, four were ebook. I am just blanking on what those ebooks were. Uh, okay. Um, and then mixed media would be like an ebook and an audiobook. Series or standalone. Um, I read seven that were a standalone, nine were part of a series. So I read four from Alice Oseman in the Heartstopper series, two books from um, the Amber and Dusk duology, which is completed, and then Cat Massage Therapy Volume 2. Uh, and so far there are three volumes out. Uh, let's see, series started. I started two series. Um, sequels read. I've read seven sequels. Because it's just the next, which makes sense. Because it's like, the sequel I don't count as like just the second book in a series. The sequel can be the third book depending on where you're at. If you've read the fifth book in the series and there's eight books, each book after the fifth, in my opinion, is the sequel because it's still still continuing. Um, okay, and zero series DNF'd. Books for readathons. Who done it? Oh, I spelled who done it wrong on one of those. Eh. Okay, um, so just the Who Done It was like eleven books or something like that. Book length: four books were between three hundred and fifty pages to four hundred. Nothing was longer than that. The next longest book was between two hundred and fifty to three hundred pages, and then it was between three hundred and three fifty, and then everything else was. No, the longest book was six hundred and six hundred fifty pages. The most amount of books read was between 350 and 400. I get it now. <laughs> okay. Um, the second longest book was between 500 and 550 pages. So, um, books in the original language. Okay, so number of translated books was two. One was translated from Danish and one was translated from French. How I got it, five of the books were on my previously owned TBR, six of the books were on Scribd, four of those I can tell you, all four of the Heartstopper books were on Scribd. Um, one I read was an ARC, two were from a book box it looks like, and two from the library. Yeah, that one's right. Okay, two from the library. Um, star rating and half stars, we've already gone over that. Uh, three, five stars, etc. Um, okay, now this does break it down into half stars according to the call pile. So there's three, five stars, two, four and a half, two, four, two, three and a half, two, three star. I can't see what this number is. Three, one and a half, one two star and one one star. So I guess some of those heart stoppers were like a one and a half. Um, average star rating so far this year is a 5.73 according to Call Pile, which is a three star. Um, publication year. I read a, one book from 2022. One from 1860, two from 2018, four published in 2019, two from 2016, one from 2013, three from 2020, and two from 2021. As far as disability rep, three have disability rep, and 13 it was absent, or at least it wasn't blatantly obvious, and it could be like so not obvious to the point that even if it was there, I completely missed it. That's always the ch chance. Um, as far as breakdown, we have 
this one, the only way I could think of, and it was three different disabilities, so one per book. One of them was, they just talked about someone being mentally slower than their peers. So it's like a just a learning disability, I guess, where it, they just take longer to learn. They just, and that one was in The Woman in White. It just talked about how this character was slower than everyone else her age. So she just wasn't on the same level mentally. So... Yeah, so I just labeled that as mental slowness. I do not know what the correct terminology would be. Um, so, uh, one book had autism rep and one book had OCD rep. As far as written by, um, I have one book where it's not specified and I'm generally going by pronouns unless, I mean, I'll do like a quick Google search, but I don't want to go too, into too depth because I really don't care what someone's sexuality is that writes the book. I just care that the book is good, plain and simple. Um, but for the sake of Copile, I did look into it a little bit more than I usually do. I went by the pronouns used, so like she, her, they, them, um, things like that. Uh, three books were written by a male author, and let's see, 11 were written by a woman, and these are just, like, I couldn't find anything that I went by the pronouns, and unless I find something that states differently, I'm going by the pronouns, whether it's man or a woman. One, I couldn't figure it out, <laughs> one or the other, not specified, could not figure it out. And one is actually, it was written by a trans woman. As far as nationality goes, five were English, so five of the authors were from the UK. One is, I don't know where they were from, and I, I couldn't figure it out. One is British, specifically British. Uh, one is Belgian, two is Danish, and six are American. And new or returning author, seven I have read from before, and nine are a uh, new author. And then once you've read, if it's like with Alice Oseman and there being like, what, four or five of the Heartstopper books, once you've read the first one, she's a new to you author, but then you get to the second one and you've read from them before. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I want to look to see... Because those ebooks, I don't remember what they were, and I want to see what they were. Let me fix the spelling of this that I did weird. Okay, that's fixed. What were the ebooks I read? Where is it? Okay, so Little Book of Huga, I finished that. I started that one. The Little Book of Huga is the nonfiction book, and I started that one before January, but I finished it like January 1st, so it just went in for being completed in January. Um, let's see, The Piper was an audiobook, Physical was Real Life, A Sprinkle of Sorcery, Cat Massage Therapy. Unicorn Bowling, and that is the one Dana Simpson wrote the Phoebe and Her Unicorn series, and Dana Simpson is trans. And let's see. Oh, the ebooks were Heartstopper from Scribd. I read the ebook versions. So that's it. That is my first attempt at the stats for the month. Um, I like watching people's stats videos. I will continue to try and track these um, stats and, yeah, go from there. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how some of these numbers might shift throughout the year. I just think it's interesting and I just look forward to see how things change if they do. So I don't know. Let me know what your favorite thing is to track and just talk to me. What was your favorite read for the month of January? And what are you most looking forward to reading for the month of February? Talk to me in the comments section below and until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.